Uh, hello everyone and welcome back to our Halloween ranked and reviewed series. Today we are looking at the home finish line, aren't we, Alanis? We are. Close to anyway. We are on the second last episode. Second there's last Raptors episode. there and Predators. Raptors, Predators, Michael Myers. Is. We are here continuing our Halloween ranked and reviewed series with our review of Halloween as we just said you are watching halloween ranked and reviewed for our halloween kills review i'm your host tommy west and joining me as always is my co-host alanis motherfucking max alanis morissette <laughs> with his jagged little pill it feels so good swimming in your stomach. <laughs> now, if you haven't already, please leave a like and a comment. Tell us down below where you would rank this film against the others in the franchise, or maybe just tell us your complete ranking from number, what, 12 to number one. 12 movies so far We're on the 13th, not long after you watch this one. Though. Yes. How are you feeling about Coming to the finish line of this series, Alanis. I just hope the finish line in the last movie is good. <laughs> I so see that, bad story. I see. I foresee a boy named Corey ruining this fucking. I'm looking at my <laughs> crystal ball and I'm like, no. No! No! Corey! Corey! Fire! So, if you like which, what we do, which after what we just did, very surprised if any of you do, please leave a like and a comment. We just said it before, but we need you to. We need you to, we need you to be here for our big Halloween Ends review because not only are you getting it early like you usually do, but you're getting it extra early. Alas, do you Excellent. want to tell them when our review comes out? Can you remember? It comes out on the... I can't remember the date, but... October 12th. 12th at 11.55pm Australian Eastern Standard. It's, so not, it's not Eastern Standard Time anymore, remember? It's Daylight Savings Time. Ah, uh, yes. You Queenslanders get it at 10.55. Yes. And you Englishmen, I don't know. You get it in the <laughs> That's Scottish people. Potato, 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 potato. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so with that, well, honest, let's get, let's get, let's stop fucking this chicken, all right? And let's get into fucking this chicken with our overview of Halloween Kills. Halloween Kills. Release date, oh, release year, 2021, with a rating of 18 plus and a runtime of one hour and 45 minutes, with pretty low IMDb rating of 5.5 out of 10. The synopsis goes like this. Surviving victims of Michael Myers form a vigilante mob and vow to end his reign of terror after they discover that he is still alive. This is directed by David Gordon Green, uh, written by... John Carpenter, based on characters created by, Deborah Hill, based on characters created by, and Scott Teams. This stars Jamie Lee Curtis, Judy Greer, Andy Matichak, and Nick Castle, uh, James Jude, Courtney, um, yeah, a bunch of others who maybe we'll talk about shortly. And this had a box office budget of $20 million estimated on its opening weekend in US and Canada. It made forty nine million point four million uh forty nine point four million dollars and then grossed in US and Canada ninety two ninety two million and then grossed worldwide a hundred and thirty one point six million dollars. Now so they got pretty much double the budget that they got for Halloween two thousand and eighteen in this one, and it definitely shows. Definitely shows. So with that we are going to get into our thoughts on Halloween Kills. And as always, Alanis 
is here to take the floor. Alanis, what are your thoughts on Halloween Kills? I did not mind this movie. It, it's a nice follow-up to uh, to the first one, Halloween 2018. It gets right into it, and it very much feels like a middle point. Like I don't feel this movie feels like a complete movie. It feels like the in-between, which is another reason why I hope the next one is good. Um, it's a very distinct just middle. Not that that's a bad thing, but I think with what they at least started trying to do, I think they're achieving that well. Um, I've heard that the next movie is not the same night, which upsets me a little bit because they kind of had that continuation going. Um, yes, yeah, so I like how it follows directly on, gets straight into it. Um, and yeah, it has some really nice recreated flashbacks as well. Which, which, one of the things that really impressed me about this movie. Um, I think that this movie, I'm going to agree with you, that this movie was very well made. Um, has some of my favourite moments from the entire series in this, um, in this movie. Um, I will say, though, surrounded by those pretty decent moments, have a few iffy, terrible decisions. Um, but overall, I really like this movie. Um, the main points of the movie I like are when you get the flashback, the start, the 1970s flashback, um, where it just feels like you're watching something from Halloween 2 from the early 80s. It feels really awesome. Um, it's well shot. The cinematography it looks like something from the 70s, like the acting, the costume, the, the set design. It all just feels so authentically done that you could almost, like, question if it was actually shot back in the 70s, and I love that. Yeah. Um, it also has some of my favourite moments of deaths in this um, whole franchise, like when he's testing his knives out on that dude in the kitchen. That's fucking amazing. When he stabs her through the fucking throat with the halogen lamp uh, light or whatever it is. Um, when he... Uh, when he does the whole fire brigade in at the start, it's fucking incredible yeah. choreography, the way you fucking hold them up with the saw and everything like that. All those moments build to making this movie one of the most enjoyable for me to watch and the most fun. Um, even though we had to deal with things like Evil Dies Tonight and uh, Tommy, is it Tommy? His yeah. fucking speech at the start in the fucking, like at the, what is it? the what would you call it? Like the open mic night or whatever, you know yeah, what I the mean? bar venue. That speech thing. where, you know, he gives a whole speech and you're just like, shut the fuck up, man. And then, you know, the stupid shit of like running that fat, poor mental health, mental institute guy to his death off the fucking roof. Yeah, um, that, that entire scene was unnecessary. It, it was just boring. I didn't care. Yeah, and I... Again, it was like he, that. Cli that clearly wasn't Michael Myers. Like they're chasing after this dude who's like half as tall. Like looks yep. like Danny DeVito from the Penguin from Batman Returns, and they're chasing this guy. So don't they know what Michael looks like, especially like a lot of them. Like a lot of them are talking about, "Hey, I went to school with him and hung out with him at the start," and blah blah blah. You know what I mean? Like it just yeah. it baffles. But um. I also think it's a pretty cheap thing to do, which is to leave Jamie Lee Curtis strapped in that hospital bed basically the entire movie as well. Yeah. Yep. What else did you like about it and didn't like about it? Um, that was a big one, that hospital scene um, and keeping her in the hospital the whole time. It, yeah, the rage mob thing I get, but it could have been a lot shorter. Like, it, it made its point... Then it pulled uh, the Batman and overstayed its welcome kind of thing. I almost feel like they could have done the whole mob mentality thing and kind of did it, not the same, but the same amount that we got in Halloween 4, that mob mentality where they were chasing. Yeah. That was like the perfect amount, even though it went silly and they did things in that, still with that with poor, poor like decisions made for that. But if they would have done that sort of like, chunk like where it's like a side story and it's only here and there and had it 
not so prevalent, I think it would have worked. But yes. I don't think I don't think surrounding the movie with that mob mentality made it all that great. You know what I mean? Um, but I would still definitely put this up there with one of the best entries in the franchise. And I do not understand the absolute downright hate for this fucking movie. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't see it as a middle point and view it as a standalone movie where if you try to look at it as a contained movie, it doesn't work as well. I think you have to think of it as at that middle point out of three movies that are essentially just one movie or, yeah. Um, which I think, even the first time I saw it, I'm like, cool, they're doing this. This is what this is. It's pretty clear. Um, like there's a couple of things I don't like, the cutaway deaths again. Um, but I think that's just something that's going to happen. I, don't, I just think there wasn't a lot of... The good thing was there wasn't as many of those. Yeah. So. Um, one, I think one thing that rubbed me the wrong way is they kind of fell in that pitfall of he's not a guy, he's something else, and then just don't explain it. And they've done it a, a lot through the, the, the entire franchise with Michael Halley, kind of he's not a guy, he's something else. And then not really explained it and not really developed that and just going, that's why he's still alive. And it's like, it's, it just feels cheap. Um, I don't wouldn't say it destroys the movie or anything. And, but yeah, it's, um, it seems over the, the 40 years, they've never really settled on what they're going to do with him or explain what they're doing with him for why he can take this punishment and not die. Yeah. Um, well, I definitely don't think they were trying to explain it in a supernatural way in this. Like, they were mainly trying to say that he has some sort of power, not power as in like superpower or supernatural power, but as in like strength that other humans don't have. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he has something that it's not like a supernatural thing or like a weird spell or like a cult thing. Um, it's just this guy has immense strength, power, and um, cannot be stopped for some reason. I don't know. I look at him as kind of like um, when you watch the movie Scarface. At the end of Scarface, Tony Montana is coked out of his mind. It's been like you know, you've seen Scarface, yeah. Yeah. The end where he's just sitting there snorting lines off the fucking mountains of coke on his table, and everyone's coming in to shoot him dead, and he's like ready to shoot everyone down, and he's like shooting them all as he's like on the stairs and all that. And they're literally shooting him with automatic weapons. And he's like, come on, ah, and just standing there and just keeps going and keeps going. Like, you want to fucking go? Yeah? You want to fucking? And he just keeps standing there after like 25 rounds have been putting into him until he gets shot in the back with a shotgun, which makes him fall into the water off the balcony. It's because he's so ramped up on cocaine that he's, he's still going, you know what I mean? Like it's still got yeah. the kick in the energy that it's been given him to make him be able to kind of have superhuman strength. And I know for a fact that that's a real thing because my dad used to be in those sorts of scenes a little bit and he's seen people running at the police getting shot and not stop running at the police because of how high they are on drugs. So I kind of look at Michael Myers similar to that. Of course, not the drug thing, but there's something that drives him that makes him just be able to withstand all this shit that happens to him even though it seems really far-fetched i still think that that's how i kind of make it work for me you know what i mean yeah, um yeah. how do you think to that yeah. you know that's a fair fair explanation yeah cool um and tell me what you who you thought were the strongest um characters in this and who you thought were the weakest a bunch of the mob were just really average like Including the dude who has his big monologue in the the talent show, um, I like the the doctor and nurse. They're uh, I, I wish they hadn't died as early on as they did. They've got the the nurse has a great death though, like pretty much one of my favorite deaths out of the entire franchise. The um, yeah, it's so funny, man. I remember seeing that in the cinema and laughing. Yeah, I think the main the main cast are, are good, um, like the. Uh, Laurie, her daughter, her daughter's daughter, her daughter's 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 daughter. 
The door is door is door is door is. I love, I love how much. Um, I just love how much they took this to a level of like, you want to see kills? That's why it's called kills. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I think that this movie stands strongly because of that fact. I think that had they not had the amount of kills and fun in this movie and then still had the evil dies tonight and the mob mentality and stuff, this movie would have felt a lot less fun, a lot less good. I think that what makes this movie stand out and be fun isn't its plot or story. It's more watching Michael Myers just kill people. Own. You know what I mean? Um, and I feel like that that's what this movie was set out to do. Like, this is what the point of this movie was. Um, do you feel that's what it was? Definitely. Definitely. I think so. Cool. Um, yeah. I definitely think that this movie gets way too much hate. Um, I think that it deserves praise. And I'm hoping that with the end, much like we got with Jurassic World Dominion, while it did not please everybody, while it did not um, make everyone ha- think it was a, sat- a satisfying ending, it definitely did bridge the gap from Fallen Kingdom to Dominion and made that middle movie feel like more of a more uh, thought out and more finished. Um, and I'm hoping that that's what we're going to get from Halloween Ends after Halloween Kills. Um, yes. But... You know, after hearing that it starts five years after the fact and stuff, I'm hoping that it doesn't feel too disjointed as well. You know what I mean? So, I don't know. I guess we'll wait and see. Um, yeah, I think my favourite moments from this movie simply are, um, yeah, the 70s recreation kind of at the start, um, the firefighter bit, um uh, what's the other bit that I like? Yeah, I, I don't mind the gay couple when they, some of them, their stuff's pretty funny. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that old dude that's like, ah, oh, there's a guy, there's a big guy in the bathroom wearing a monster mask. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, testing his knives out on that dude and everything. There was just some great mo- moments in this movie. Fun, humor, sort of silly fun like you know what i mean like him testing the knives out tilting his head back and forth and stuff very silly um uh, but creepy at the same time and it, i think it works really well you know what i mean um they, yeah. found a good, they found a good balance of making it fun sort of silly and sort of modernized and believable but kind of also nearly ruined it too with the mob mentality thing the other escaped mental patient um and jamie lee curtis taking a back seat and the strange ending. Yeah. What do you think about the strange ending? I actually looked up the extended ending um, after I watched it. So I'm like, now I want to know. I think I prefer the shortened ending. Um, the extension we have Jamie Lee Curtis calling her daughter and then talking to Michael is just... It made, gave it less impact. I can see why they took it away. Well, I didn't watch the extended cut. Um, I downloaded it, um, and for some reason, when I watched it, everything like the Universal logo and stuff was like not centered. It was like over to the right of my screen on my TV. Yeah. Like, what the fuck is going on? Tried it through so many different programs and shit. I think maybe it was like a Dolby Digital Atmos copy that was maybe meant for like. Um, projectors or something like that because it just wasn't the right aspect uh, ratio for my TV. And even if I tried to change the aspect ratio and shit, like nothing changed it. So I tried to download another extended cut and it took forever. And I was like, fuck this. I'm just going to watch it on Prime because it's free. You know what yeah. I mean? So, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I'm very excited to lead into Halloween ends now, though, because I really enjoyed this movie. I really enjoyed the movie before this. Um. And I'm really hoping that we can really end this movie, this series, well. And not I don't want to walk out of that cinema disappointed because when we review this movie, if we walk out of that cinema disappointed, I can tell you how the review's going to start. And it's going to be me with like this. <laughs> and I'm going to go...
I'm just going to be like that for ages until I'm ready to start the review. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> me and Alanis are sitting there for 15 minutes going, then you know I'd be really disappointed. So I'm telling you, that's what I'm doing. If it's shit, that's what I'm doing. If I, But if it's good, I'm going to be like, hooray! You know what I mean? So, all right. Have you uh, said anything? I think that's you missed anything? all I've really said. I mean, have to say. Of course, it's everything I've already said because I said it. Cool. I said it good. What I thought we might do as well for a special thing at the end of our Halloween ends review, to just close it off, is maybe me and you could watch a watch do a watch along at the end of the episode. It's only a fifteen minute watch along of Angry Video Game Nerds Halloween Atari video game review. Yeah. Yes. I think that'd be funny if we watched that. It's really it's hilarious. And we'll do a watch along and we'll make that like sort of a finale. And I'm thinking that whenever we do horror movies or video um movies that have video game related content that AVG and does and stuff like that. Maybe we'll do that at the end of everything. You know what I mean? Sort of just to close it off, you know? Why not? Cool. So with that, we're going to get into what you may have missed. Oh, wait a second. That was Alanis's, uh, that was Alanis's new segment. And guess what? He, f- he missed what you may have missed. Isn't that ironic? Don't you think? Alanis Morrison. Too ironic? Yeah, he really does <laughs> think. Oh, why did you miss it? Oh, well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so with that, let's get into our trivia, which Tom Ye never misses. <laughs> uh, <coughs> all right. In the flashback scene to 1978, Michael attacks Deputy McKay with a rope. In the original Halloween 1978, Sheriff Lee Brackett responded to an alarm in a hardware store and reported that a rope, some Halloween masks, and a set of knives were stolen. David Gordon Green recalled that when they attempted to find a yearbook photo of one of the Michael Myers' victims from the 1978 film, he came across a yearbook photo of Bob Odenkirk. As people know him, he's from Breaking Bad, The Lawyer, and also Better Call Saul. Um, He thought that photo resembled the original actor, John Michael Graham. The rights issue was were resolved so that Green could use Bob Odenkirk's photo instead of the actual actor. Odenkirk is therefore credited as Bob, despite not physically appearing in the movie. Actual firefighters from Cannon Air Force Base Fire Department appear in the film's opening. Um, as the film was shot digitally, film grain filters were used in the new 1978 flashback scene. Halloween 2018 was released 40 years after Halloween 1978. Halloween Kills was released 40 years after Halloween 2 in 1981. And Halloween's Ends is set to be released 40 years after Halloween 3, Season of the Witch from 1982. <laughs> Nick Castle noted that when recording the sounds of breathing as Myers, he didn't recognise his own appearance in the film. Uh, the, the logo for the uh, Haddonfield Memorial Hospital, as seen in this film, is directly taken from the now decanonised Halloween 2 from 1981. Um... Paul Rudd was offered to reprise his Tommy Doyle character, but due to screening conflicts with Ghostbusters Afterlife, he had to decline. Thank God! <laughs> um, the premise for Haddonfield citizens banding together against Michael Myers is similar to the vigilante mob that forms against him in Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers from 1988. Um... The, fra- the phrase, evil dies tonight, is said exactly 29 times. Laurie! <laughs> um, the object used by Michael Myers to kill the first fire, fire a firefighter is a halogen. Um, 
Buster Rhymes, who was in Halloween Resurrection, was almost included in the film, but was scrapped. <laughs> Jesus, what were they trying to do to this movie? Um, on the day of re- on the day of release, in response to widespread complaints about the abrupt cliffhanger ending, David Gordon Green announced an extended cut of the movie with the original longer ending intact. Which you said suck. So, uh, there's a radio tower in the background of the opening scene, which will come into play in Halloween Ends 2022. We'll do one or two more. Similar to the theatrical cut of Halloween The Curse of Michael Myers in 1995, Michael get, gets a dose of extreme melee revenge from Tommy Doyle. It's not as effective as here. Uh, it's not as effective here. And we will do one more. Judy Greer texted Dylan Arnold after watching the film and told him, um, told him his mother should not see the movie. Yeah. That is trivia. Um, there's a lot more. If you want to go check it out, go check it out. IMDb, Halloween Kills. And now we're going to get into our goof section. And, I mean, there's no better thing to bring in goofs than... (laughs) So good. All right. Let's get to our goofs of this movie. Goofs, of course, are things like mistakes that were made in the movie that you can still spot. Uh, they can range from being continuity errors, character errors, audio-visual unsynchronized, which we try to avoid, um, crew or in- equipment visible, factual errors, plot holes, revealing mistakes, and so on. So let's look at some of these. The firefighters perform a full smoke dive to the burning building at the start of the film in spite of it already being up in flames and without knowledge of any survivors trapped inside. Normally, fire brigades don't endanger their people needlessly in such situations and focus only on preventing the fire from spreading to the surrounding area. When Loomis's station wagon is seen in the background during the flashback scene, it has a passenger side mirror. The original wagon in Halloween only had a driver side mirror. Um... When officers capture Michael in the 1978 flashback scene, Dr. Loomis pulls his handgun to execute Michael when he is on the ground. In reality, he would not have been allowed to do this in front of the officers capturing Michael. Oh, no, duh. Um, (laughs) After having major surgery, Laurie recovers quicker than normal from the effects of the anesthesia and doesn't seem as hindered in her movements while recovering from the surgery. Maybe she was on a lot of cocaine too. (laughs) When the asylum patient jumps from the building, the POV shot shows him falling face down, hands flailing at the sidewalk as the sidewalk grows closer. When the crowd approaches to him, he's man- you see his mangled body, uh, uh, body up, face face up afterwards. Sorry, and we'll go one more. During the park attack, as Michael is on top of the SUV, Mar- Marion shoots out the back driver's side window that, that Vanessa then jumps out of to leave. Shortly after, Marcus goes to climb out. When Michael jumps down in front of the window, the reverse shot shows Michael's full reflection of the fully shattered window. This would not be possible with the window gone. <laughs> so, that was our goose section. <laughs> Makes me happy every time I say it now. All right. So now it's time for us to move on to our final section of this review, and that is our ranking. What else would we do? It's called Ranked and Reviewed, baby. So (laughs) every week we review and rank a movie in a franchise against the other movies in that said franchise from least best to worst best. (laughs) Um, wait, wait, least, yeah, least worst 
to most work. How does that sound? Does that work? That sounds better. <laughs> yes. And, of course, we've been doing the Halloween movie, so we have done all previous 11 movies in this franchise. And next week, we finish it off. Oh, well, not next week, actually. Once you see this, the day after this goes up, we finish it off with Halloween ends. And last week, we ranked Halloween 2018 against the previous installments. Now, I'm going to bring up last week's rankings, and then I'm going to bring up the new ranking. This is last week. They go as follows. Tom Yang. Number one, Halloween 2007. Number two, Halloween 2018. Number three, Halloween H2O. Number four, Halloween 2. Number five, Halloween 4. Number six, Halloween. Number seven, Halloween 2, 2009. Number eight, Halloween 5. Number nine, Halloween Resurrection. Number 10, Halloween 6, Curse of Michael Myers. And number 11, Halloween 3. And Alana says, goes, Halloween 2007 at number one, Halloween 2018 at number two, Halloween 2 uh, 2009 at number three, Halloween 4 at number four, Halloween 2 at number five, Halloween 5 at number six, Halloween at number seven, Halloween 6 at number eight, Halloween H2O at number nine, Halloween 3 at number 10, and Halloween Resurrection at number 11. And now we're going to bring up the new ranking. So the ranking goes like this now. Tom Yeager. Number one, Halloween 2007. Number two, Halloween Kills. Number three, Halloween 2018. Number four, Halloween H2O. Number five, Halloween 2. Number six, Halloween. Number seven, Halloween 19. What? What? Wait, wait, wait. I'm confused here. <laughs> what have I missed out on? Okay, I missed out on Halloween 4. So, number six, Halloween 4. Number seven, Halloween 1978. Number eight, Halloween 2, 2009. Number nine, Halloween 5. Number 10, Halloween Resurrection. Number 11, Halloween 6. And number 12, Halloween 3. And Alanis's goes Halloween 2007 at number one, Halloween 2018 at number two, Halloween Kills at number three, Halloween 2 2009 at number four, Halloween 4 at number five, Halloween 2 at number six, Halloween 5 at number seven, Halloween 1978 at number eight, Halloween 6 at number nine, Halloween H2O at number 10, Halloween 3 at number 11, and Halloween Resurrection dead fucking last at number. 12. How are you feeling about this ranking, Alanis? I am hoping that Resurrection stays at the bottom because if it doesn't, that means we're having a really bad time. I know. Hey, but now that you've seen, I know you were questioning my whole where I put Halloween H2O and you were like, man, that's way too high. Now you're seeing it slowly go down. Yes. <laughs> that was my plan the entire time. It was like up until then, Halloween H2O was probably one of my favorites. And But as we go further along, you're seeing it drop. Now, are you seeing my list as being a little bit more correct than what you thought it was? Yes, definitely. <laughs> Good. Let's just hope Halloween ends tops it. Because otherwise, yeah. I'm going to top. Otherwise, I'm going to top myself. <laughs> Whilst listening to. One moment. I'll find you a song to play. You know what's funny? What's funny? I totally forgot about some of the horrible stuff we said at the end of our Halloween 2018 movie. <laughs> Do you remember this? <laughs> you remember what we said? What I was saying? We said some bad things. And I was dying of laughter while editing it. Um... And you yeah, I'm, hope, that, I'm hoping that it's taken on board well, you know. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, oh, no. <laughs> Just think of that when you end it all. So, with that, 
This has been Halloween Ranked and Reviewed with our review of Halloween Kills. Now, if you've stuck around this long and you've liked the comment, uh, like, like, sorry, if you've liked the content, subscribe, turn on notifications, leave a comment, leave a like, share, play it on repeat, play it as loud as possible. Put, it, put put headphones on your newborn baby's ears and just, like, crank it to, like, way too loud, way too loud so that the baby really just loses its hearing within a week. Um, if, you know, you rock up on the freeway and there's just been a terrible car accident and there's, like, people full on just bludgeoned and all across the road, like, just play it really loudly. Um, play it really would, loudly in the library. Yeah, or go into a church expo exposing yourself playing it really loudly. That also works too. <laughs> um, if your whole family perishes in a house fire, just play it. <laughs> and the most important one, if you find your child motionless in the pool, <laughs> play it. <laughs> You're forgetting we said that one last time and you laughed and you said yes it'll resurrect it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man everyone's got to know that we're not serious. <laughs> I hope they know that's at this point. I think Halloween fucking sucked. This is <laughs> and if you're waiting on an inheritance from like your grandparents or whatever, and the last one's like on its deathbed, but you really need the money really quickly, and you've got that pillow in your hands and you're about to suffocate them, make sure you play it as well. AJ suffocating them. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> We're horrible people. The sooner We're you all know that, the sooner you all get to know us as horrible people, the sooner this world can get along. <laughs> so everyone that has been halloween ranked and reviewed for this week we are at the home finish line Alanis. and you will see us tomorrow with our review of halloween end and i told you if it's bad you're gonna know pretty much straight away as soon as the episode starts so as always, I've been your host, Tommy West. Joining me, as always, is my co-host, Alanis Maximus. And Alanis, have you got anything else you want to make sure that people know when to play this episode? Um, I think, most importantly, you should play it when you hear this. <laughs> you make me so mad, man. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. All right. We will see you for our big Halloween Ends review. Get stiffy. Get a stiffy over it because we're, I'm already getting a stiffy. I just can't show you. It's not appropriate. No. Demonetization. Not the way you monetized. But yes. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> we will see you tomorrow or next review whenever you see this. Peace, guys. Mamma mia! <laughs> <laughs>